All right, well, that was fun. Um, big time, you know, late season November conference battle, two good teams, and uh, we knew we'd get their best, and I think we did. And, um, you know, I thought it was a really good team win for us. First half was they did a nice job keeping the ball away from us, uh, so we only got four true drives. I thought we ran the ball really well in the first half. We just never got in a rhythm, and so our passing numbers were down, but it wasn't because I didn't think we were functioning well other than I think the story of the first half, you know, we weren't good on offense on third down. We weren't good on defense on third down, didn't feel like. But credit our defense, even though they kept the ball and bled the clock, they held them to those field goals. Um, second half, I think offense was playing lights out. I mean, Preston was on fire. Uh, we were getting the one-on-ones because of how we ran the ball in the first half, and, and we were hitting them and uh, almost scoring too quick to some degree. And, you know, but when we needed to, that last drive, we were able to run the football to put the game away, bleed a lot of clock, hit the fade ball. You know, it's tough on your defense. You're up 10, so we're playing really almost true prevent, and you're making them run a lot of clock, which ended up helping. You don't want them to score at all. Um, and they made a nice play on the touchdown pass. We, you know, they beat us on the route, but, um, you know, we recovered the onside kick and killed our rushing stats by running the clock out, but that's okay. And uh, just really happy to come away with a win. Both you and Memphis came in with eight and two records. So to come in here, beat a team like that on the road, what did this say about your team, both to the public and national perception, but also to you and the guys in your locker room, what did this say? Well, I'm not worried about the national perception. I mean, I think we have a good football team, but I think we have a football team that's humble and understands how hard it is to win every week. And we've earned all nine wins, and I think they know that, and I think they're going to enjoy it tonight, but they know we got a Navy team coming in next week that's always a problem. And so... You know, I think we've respected everybody we played. Um, it's good to win here. Look, I mean, we didn't say it one time the team all week, but I think we all knew if we lose today, we're probably on the outside of a tiebreaker looking in. And so that's why this was big in case it comes to something like that, uh, to be able to knock them out of it and keep ourselves in contention for it. And, um, you know, for some reason they felt like they needed to talk a lot, and we just kind of let our pads do the talking. How I mean, obviously, but Jordan Hudson, the late touchdown, I mean, for – him to just kind of continuously find ways to get involved, to make a play like that, that finally the one time yep. you're able to get distance. Yeah, Jordan Hudson's <laughs> – I think we all see the talent of what he's going to be here. And I'm really proud of him because the last two weeks, you know, when, when Curly went down, we had that kind of five-man rotation on the outside, and he had really started to click on the right side for us. But we had to move somebody over. And he was selfless and moved over to the other side. But now he's learning a totally different side and – like two weeks, really one week last week. And so, you know, the touch volume hasn't been what he wants, but the unselfishness has been there. So for him to go in and make that, you know, one-on-one -on -one fade, which I think is going to be hard to cover him no matter who you put out there, um, to kind of almost seal the win for us, uh, I think that was fitting because he's put the team before himself like so many of our guys have. And uh, that's what's been special about this group is they've really embraced the team part. Like we said before the game, team is team over talk, and that's kind of how we want to play today. Brett, how impressed were you with that final scoring drive? <clears throat> you had scored quickly, but you were able, like yep. you said, to run the clock. You know, <clears throat> there's no secret our defense is really good, and they've had a great year. And they made the critical stops in the first half to hold them to field goals when we needed it. And late in the game, in the fourth quarter, those two consecutive drives when we were up three, they, they kept us ahead. Um, but this was the game where our offense picked up the slack. And... You know, you talk about when it was 10 to 7 them, the long 13, 14 play drive we had, almost exclusively running it to score and go up 14 to 10. Gives us a lead at half. But then to come out, the drive to start the second half, I think y'all saw, um, I think you saw Preston Stone grow up big time. I mean, we had back to back critical third down and conversions. One was like a third and medium to seven or eight. I can't remember. The other one was like third and 12 or something, I think, after the sack. And he hit Jake down the middle on one and Mermelo. Um, that was a gutty drive that put us up 21-13, and you can't say enough about how the middle eight worked where we held them to a field goal before half, we scored a touchdown to start the second momentum-wise. Now, they're a good team. They went right down and tied it up, and it was like three or four plays later, we're ahead. And, you know, they go tie it up again, and then three or four plays later, we're down there. We had to settle for a field goal. But the way the offense responded, and then, sorry, but to your question, <laughs> the long drive, I think it was seven minutes or so when we got it, um, up three. And the defense had just held him again, and to methodically move it down the field, run the clock, and finish it with a touchdown, uh, it all but won the game for us. And I think that was just a big character-building drive for our offense. And I think the second half is where you saw 
uh, Preston Stone make a big leap. How big is that? I mean, you only had eight pass attempts in the first half, and then to kind of say, to an extent, go win us the yeah. ball game, it, it's in your hands, and he does. It's huge. I mean, you kind of felt like the way the game was going after that first drive in the second half that, I mean, they're a good offense. It's the two best offenses in our league probably for a reason, statistically, right? And so you knew we were going to have to score touchdowns, and while we were running the ball so well, like we were going to have to be explosive down the field in the passing game. And so, um, you know, we got aggressive, put it in his hands, and um, that's what you're going to have to do to win a conference title, you know, win games like this on the road late in the season to keep yourself in it. If we're fortunate enough to keep playing like next week even, you know, he's going to have to make big plays and big moments and to finish 15-23, 286, two touchdowns, and again, no turnovers. Like, he's playing aggressive and he's valuing the football, and, you know, we're just playing really good team ball. Curious about your thoughts of the job Garen Justice did. You were without Hiram White. You lost Marcus Bryant. Justin Osborne goes back out to tackle. You got P.J. Williams back after he missed last week. Just the job that that group has done, mixing and matching and keeping Preston in one piece. <clears throat> yeah, the O-line is the group that never gets any credit. You know, uh, I think the, the Joe Moore Award people gave us a little shout out this week as an honorable mention. I think that was deservedly so, and we appreciate that. But that group, Garens does a fantastic job. And to your point, the next man up mentality, last week it was J.O. going in at right tackle. We get P.J. back this week. We decided not to start him, but he was available. And then we lose Marcus. I want to say it was right to start the second half, but maybe I'm off on my timeline. And P.J. plugs right in there, and we don't miss a beat. Um, we gave up one sack today. We was probably more impressed in than them. And, and then to run the ball, like I said, if we don't bleed the clock out, we were just probably 180, 190, it felt like. Uh, we had another 100-yard rusher. Can't say enough about those guys. It doesn't matter who's in. And I think our O-line is a good kind of like microcosm of our team. It's just a team. It don't. It don't matter who we throw it to. It doesn't matter who we hand it to. It doesn't matter who's in on defense. Guys just keep making plays, and they play hard for each other. Jalen uh, Knight looked like he got hurt on that first carry. <sighs> Left, came back, looked like he might not play again. Yeah. That's another carry, that's a touchdown. I, yeah, so I don't know if he got hurt on the first carry or on the second play because he was in those two plays. You have a better idea than I do. Um, but he came out after the second play, and it was an ankle. And so for a minute he was out. They were testing it. Then he was out, and then I don't know if they went and what they did to try to get him feeling better. And then late before half, they said he's back. At that point, LJ and Kamar were rolling pretty well. So I think Coach Hall did a good job of going with the two guys that were healthy and fresh. I don't think it's serious since he was able to come back. And we got to the second half, I think it loosened up and he was ready to go. So, you know, I'll find out from our training staff how serious it is. But the fact that he was able to come back and finish and, like you said, scored the touchdown on that one drive, uh, I think he'll be okay. LJ was dinged earlier in the year, but 115 yards today in the second game in a row with yep. over 100. Is he now the running back you thought you were getting when you added him? Absolutely. I think you see how well those all of our backs complement each other. And, you know, Kamar and Jalen have that explosiveness, that big playability that, that you need. you got to have guys that if it's blocked clean can take it to the house or be explosive and make a guy miss. But we always thought LJ would be a great complement to those guys as a guy who can just – he gets downhill. He runs behind his pads, downhill. He leans on people. He breaks a lot of explosive runs, you know. And um, so when you can hand the ball 21 times to somebody for 115 – you know, the two backs that took the bulk of the carries averaged over five and a half yards a carry. Um, yeah, it's complementing each other the way we thought. And, and I think you see just the productivity and how he can be kind of a guy that, that closes you out in the second half of football games. I certainly don't want you to get in any trouble for anything saying, but it seemed like there were some calls and some things that maybe Memphis wasn't doing and you weren't doing or doing to yourselves necessarily uh, that came in big times. How big is it for the guys to – kind of overcome that yeah. a little bit too. Look, our, I'll say this. Our officials are really good in this league. They do a great job. They're good people. Like you talk to them before the games, during and after. They care about the league, the kids. They even let people like me chew on them when I don't like a call. And um, I think they do a good job of explaining why they made the calls they did. And you can appreciate that as a coach. Um, we're all competing. They know that. Both sides are competing. We always want the calls to go our way. They're not always going to go your way. That's it's the human error, or not error, but the human element of sports. I'm going to make bad calls. Our kids are going to make miss, you know. And so you got to live with it. And so I'm not worried about that. I am, That is just part of playing on the road. You know, it's hard to win on the road with the crowd, the other team. I mean, and so 
I don't think we won or lost because of calls, and I don't think they'd say the same. And, and I appreciate how our officials handled themselves here. You came in today, your conference victories, I think, averaged 30 points or something like that. Um, but with the postseason coming up soon, I know you got Navy first, obviously. Did you did your team need a game like today where you had to go back and forth and sort of fight it down to the end? I don't know if we needed one, but it was great to see how we respond when we get one. You know, and – um, it was, it, it, especially, you know, in the first half it was back and forth. Most of the second half it was back and forth until we finally put a two-score margin up there. Um, again, they're a great team. Uh, they've proven that this year. Their only two losses were the top 25 teams. In my opinion, they've lost to a third, but I don't get to make those decisions. Um, so, you know, we needed to make plays when the game was on the line, and that was what was cool. I didn't see our guys flinch. I mean, um, just like – the last few weeks, we knew we'd get their best shot. This was their chance to – they beat us. Now maybe they're in the driver's seat. If they lose, they're out, right? And and so we got a great effort. You know, Ryan does a good job with his team. I think he's going to do a good job here for a long time and uh, in this league. There, there have been some big games the last few years that SMU has played in. You mentioned the 19-game yeah. day game here. But there really hasn't been one with this much on the line. How much kind of fun is it to be in these meaningful games and see these guys respond the right way? It's a, lot, it's a lot of fun. It's the position we want our program to be in, right? And so, you know, you work so hard to get in these moments. And then, like, in 2019, we were in one, and, and, and it didn't go our way, right? And then, you know, it felt like last year. We, we still would have needed some things to go our way, but we go down to Tulane. And if we can win, then we're in, an, in the conversation that last week, and, and we don't play well, right? Same week of the season, on the road, big game. You saw what happened last year. You saw what happened this year. So I think it shows the growth of our program. Uh, what our coaches have done, uh, what our players have done and bought into. And so we hope to be in this position more. And uh, it was good to, to be in a game that was back and forth, back and forth, and find a way to, to win.